Thank you, Emma. Uh, thank you, all of you, for being here. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. We meet tonight in the strangers' dining room, but I feel very privileged to be here, and I agree, I don't feel like a stranger. I think it's been a marvellous experience tonight. I teach a variety of public law courses at the University of Sydney Law School, but I'm probably best known for my work in migration law. My work has made me very conscious both of the challenges that attend the migration process when an individual is coming into a country where the dominant culture and religion might be quite different from their own country of origin. Um, but we actually live in a part of the world uh, that hosts um, the majority of the world's Muslims. And I love it that uh, all around the world at this time, iftar dinners are taking place in a variety of countries with languages and foods consumed almost as diverse as humanity itself. And I love the fact that Australia, as it's grown in population, has also become increasingly diverse in its religious faith. Um, I think, and I agree with many of the speakers tonight, that this diversity overwhelmingly has been a source of strength, but only because Australia as a country has not only embraced diversity, but is beginning to not talk about multiculturalism, but rather to think about cultural competence. While Muslims represent a minority in this country, they're becoming increasingly significant contributors to the mosaic that is Australian society. This is the 10th year that Affinity has run this iftar dinner. Every year it's got better and more spectacular. Um, I agree with our speakers that we are making such a marvellous contribution to making this country more diverse. Can I say, though, I do love the tradition that has also developed in Australia of acknowledging that, hey, guys, go back a couple of generations and the vast majority of us are migrants too, that we acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we meet. I'm giving another of these speeches on Thursday out in Preston's. Now, I'm from Melbourne, so I had to look up where that was. And I had to do some research to find out who the traditional owners were. And I'm just crossing my fingers and toes that I've got it correct. But you know what? I think that, uh, that the work that Affinity is doing um, is extraordinary. I feel really honoured and privileged to be on the board. Um, and I'm also privileged, I think, to work at a university that understands this, that gets it, that actually has started to really talk about cultural competence and put some money behind it, uh, particularly in so far as we need to catch up and become more culturally competent in relation to our First Peoples. So thank you very much, Natalie, for a marvellous introduction tonight. Um, Cultural competence, of course, means being aware of your own cultural positioning, accepting that there's more than one way to view the world and to open our hearts and minds so as to learn and value from distant, uh, di value difference. But I think as our Chief Justice has said, he's always so engaging and wise. Um, it's also about trust. We have to build trust and without groups like Affinity, that's very hard to do. So I am also proud, though, that we are in a society, in a country and in time where uh, we are able to come together like this to think and to become more culturally competent. Um, it's my honour to bring this evening to a close. There really is nothing that I can add except, you know, I have a very diverse family. I've got three children. The oldest, my oldest son, and I can't tell you which one I'm most proud of, my oldest son is a professional surfer. The second one is a music composer who writes music for film. Sadly, he lives in Los Angeles now because that's where it's all happening. But do you know, wherever I go around, and the third one is it, my daughter, is a lawyer, but, you know, she's OK. <laughs> <laughs> but can I say, I've had the pr a privilege of doing a lot of work internationally 
over my 24 years, can you believe that, as an academic. And my work has taken me to many countries, including to Turkey. Wherever I go, I try to look for musical instruments. Now, do you have any idea how privileged we were tonight? That man playing the Ney is a genius. Thank you. A, sh a shout out to the Whirling Dervishes, uh, but to the Sufi music group. When I was in Istanbul, um, look, we have had a very fortunate life, and so wherever I go, I'm able to access the best. And so I found the best uh, Ney player in Istanbul, and we went to his shop, and he got an array of, of Ney's out, and I chose one. Do you know my son, who's a bit of a whiz at anything that produces music and his first instrument was the oboe so he is a wind player took him three days three days to make a sensible sound out of it uh, I can tell you the man who was playing tonight was a master so anyway sorry a shout out for the musicians look may I join everyone who has thanked the affinity board the indefatigable uh, Amat Polat, uh, Chemin, his wife, um, Minai, who holds us all together on the board, and all the other people behind the scenes. It's an extraordinary organisation to be involved with. I think we should all be members of the Affinity Foundation, to be honest. Uh, it's just been wonderful. So, with no more ado, may I bring the evening to a close. Ramadan Mubarak, everyone. Thank <laughs> you.